Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News, broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Intense fighting persists in the Gaza Strip while hostilities between Hezbollah and Israel continue to intensify. Israeli Defense Minister Yav Gallant travels to Washington as the IDF is preparing to transition to phase C in the Gaza Strip. U.S. military chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Charles Brown, warns that the United States may not be able to assist Israel in defending itself against an all-out war with Hezbollah. Intense fighting continues to reign in the Gaza Strip, with chief focus on the southern border town of Rafah, as well as central sector of the Palestinian enclave. While on Israel's northern front, a steep upward trajectory of hostilities continues to raise prospects of an uncontrolled escalation. Speaking from the central Gaza Strip, an IDF brigade commander stressed that his forces continue to gain significant achievements against the Islamist Hamas and its terror affiliates. החטיבה נלחמת עכשיו במרכז הרצועה באופן מאוד משמעותי, החיכוך מאוד גבוה, הלוחמים שלנו רודפים, לא פחות מזה, את האויב בכל מקום שהוא נמצא בו, פוגעים באופן משמעותי באמלח ובמבנים ובתשתיות שלו. While the RDF deepens its achievements throughout the Gaza Strip, Hamas leader Yahya Sinwal continues to reject any compromise related to a temporary ceasefire aimed at securing the release of hostages in exchange for far-reaching Israeli concessions. And while the only pressure on Hamas remains Israel's military operation, efforts to force a stop to Israel's defensive war versus Hamas prior to achieving its goals Includes separate concerted efforts by mediators and international actors alike to claim that the only manner in which Israel's northern front versus Hezbollah and Lebanon could de escalate would be for Israel to end its war versus Hamas in Gaza. <laughs> لتخفيض التصعيد في كافة الجبهات وأن الدبلوماسية هي الطريق الوحيد لإنهاء جميع هذه النزاعات والحروب. Well, the Qatari Prime Minister's statement seemingly indicates its aspiration to salvage Hamas from its intended fate. During a European Foreign Ministerial in Luxembourg, German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock stressed her perceived urgency of achieving a ceasefire for the Gaza Strip. Wir brauchen diese Feuerpause. Die Geiseln müssen endlich nach diesen unerträglichen letzten Monaten aus der Haft, aus der Gefangenschaft der Hamas, aus der Verschleppung freikommen. Das Leid von den zwei Millionen Palästinensern, es muss endlich ein Ende haben. Denn es ist vollkommen klar, Israel kann nur in Sicherheit leben, wenn Palästinenser in Sicherheit leben. Und Palästinenser können nur in Sicherheit leben, wenn Israel sicher ist. Dafür muss Hamas dem beiden Plan jetzt endlich zustimmen. Es braucht diese Feuerpause dringender denn je. In diesem Sinne reise ich jetzt auch noch mal in die Region, auch weiter in den Libanon, weil die Situation an der sogenannten Blue Line im Norden von Israel, sie ist mehr als besorgniserregend. Eine weitere Eskalation wäre eine Katastrophe für alle Menschen in der Region. Deswegen ist auch dafür so absolut wichtig, dass wir endlich zu der Feuerpause in Gaza kommen. The Greek foreign minister for his part sees the opportunity to voice outrage over leveled threats by the Iranian proxy Hezbollah towards Cyprus, an EU member state, pledging a united European response to confront the threats of terror. We are in the midst of two horrible wars, which are now in a state of escalation, unfortunately. A Russian aggression against Ukraine and the war in the Middle East, especially for the Middle East, in spite of the hope that we can have a peace formula and a peace process, we can see now escalation in all respects. It is absolutely unacceptable to make 
threats against the sovereign state of the European Union. We stand by Cyprus and we will all be together in all kinds of global threats coming from terrorist organizations. While extensive efforts to de-escalate the situation between Lebanon and Israel are ongoing, EU Foreign Policy Chief Josep Borrell voiced pessimism over prospects of achieving a diplomatic solution. No, I am, I am more worried. Much more worried. Much more. Every day the crisis that is spilling over. Every day there are more bombing on both sides of the border in Lebanon. I think that unhappily we are on the eve of the war spending. Meanwhile, the United Nations headquarters in New York, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres made a public statement in which he voiced his profound concern over prospects of escalation between the Iranian proxy Hezbollah and Israel. I felt compelled today to voice my profound concerns about escalation between Israel and Hezbollah along the blue line. Escalation in continued exchanges of fire and escalation in bellicose rhetoric from both sides as if an all-out war was imminent. The risk for the conflict in the Middle East to widen is real and must be avoided. One rash move, one miscalculation, could trigger a catastrophe that goes far beyond the border and, frankly, beyond imagination. Let's be clear. The people of the region and the people of the world cannot afford Lebanon to become another Gaza. Guterres went on to stress the need to urgently implement UN Security Council Resolution 1701, which in fact is Israel's sole demand as a prerequisite for a full-scale military confrontation to be averted. The parties must urgently recommit to the full implementation of Security Council Resolution 1701 and immediately return to a cessation of hostilities. Civilians must be protected. Children, journalists and medical workers should never be targeted. And displaced communities must be able to return to their homes. The world must say loudly and clearly, immediate de-escalation is not only possible, it is essential. There is no military solution. Amid rising prospects of a full-scale conflagration between Hezbollah and Israel, the United States announced that it has sent a number of additional naval assets into the eastern Mediterranean, while in tandem, Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant traveled to Washington for a string of meetings with his counterpart, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, and Secretary of State Antony Blinken, among other senior U.S. officials. I Austin. ארצות הברית היא בעלת הברית החשובה ביותר שלנו, המרכזית ביותר שלנו, והקשרים בינינו חשובים וחשובים במיוחד, אולי יותר מאשר אי פעם, בימים האלה. אפגוש בארצות הברית את מזכיר ההגנה, את מזכיר המדינה ובכירים נוספים מהממשל האמריקאי. בפגישות האלה אדון על הקורא בחזית עזה, בחזית לבנון, ויש להן חשיבות מכרעת בעת הזאת. אנחנו ערוכים לכל פעולה שתידרש, גם בעזה, גם בלבנון וגם במקומות נוספים. It is important to highlight that the IDF is set to conclude its high intensity conflict in the southern Gaza Strip within a number of weeks, after which the Israel Defense Forces will transition into a so-called Phase C throughout the Palestinian enclave which includes intelligence-driven special operations to counter terrorism. למעבר לשלב ג' ברצועת עזה יש חשיבות גבוהה. אני אדון עם בחירי הממשל האמריקאי על המעבר הזה, על האופן שבו הוא יכול לאפשר גם דברים נוספים, ואני יודע שאנחנו נגיע לשיתוף פעולה הדוק בין ישראל לבין ארצות הברית גם בנושא הזה. 
The anticipated transition of the IDF to Phase C will essentially free up at least one additional division that will be redeployed to Israel's northern front. Meanwhile, the U.S. military's chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Charles Q. Brown, warned that the United States may not be able to assist Israel in defending itself against an all-out war with Hezbollah, similar to the assistance it granted the IDF during Iran's blatant missile and UAV strike on April 14th. Despite having all of the necessary assets in the Central Command Area of Responsibility, General Brown asserted that the safety of U.S. service members was his priority, and while acknowledging that Iran would be more inclined to support Hezbollah, particularly if they felt that Hezbollah was being significantly threatened, Washington may not stand by Jerusalem during its hour of need. It is important to know that a senior CENTCOM officer who spoke to TV7 on condition of anonymity stressed that the U.S. has every contingency available to confront all threats in the region. However, while U.S. military personnel are keen on standing by their allies in Israel, initiating any pre-planned contingency is a matter of policy. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. Separately, I'd like to encourage you, pray for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you a Shavla Mevolach, and God willing, we'll see you during our next TV7 Israel update. Until then, Shalom from Jerusalem.